Hello students and welcome to my channel Mathsa. So in this video series, I will talk about curve tracing. Now why curve tracing is important? To trace a curve is as important like if you have a thousand words in a paragraph and parallel to it you draw a figure, the figure becomes more impressive, right? Similarly, when we have to do multiple integration, when we have to calculate the area of the curves, the volume of the solids, it is very important for us to trace the curve first, right? So tracing a curve is a very good technique where we have to take certain points into mind before we trace the curve, right? So before we move on to actually curve tracing, let us understand these crucial terminologies. So the first term that we will today understand is symmetry and origin. So now what is symmetry? Symmetry is about many axes. So we will talk it one by one. So let us talk about symmetry about the x-axis. Now when we say that a curve is symmetrical about x-axis, when it always contains even powers of y. So mathematically, if we have to check whether a function is symmetrical about y, x-axis sorry then we will simply convert y to minus y if the function remains unchanged then we say that the function is symmetrical about the x-axis so graphically x-axis will act as the mirror so whatever image you put above the x-axis the same replica you will get below the x-axis right for example let us take the function x is equal to y squared let us take all the terms on one side and let us mark this function as x minus y squared. So now to check symmetry about x-axis, let us replace y with minus y. So we will get x minus minus y whole square. So that will be x minus this is y squared. So you can see that the function f of x, y and the function f of x comma minus y remains the same. Hence, this graph is symmetrical about the x, right? So now let us talk about symmetry about the y-axis. So whenever a function contains even powers of x, then we say that the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So in this case, you can replace x with minus x. And if the function remains unchanged, then we will say that the function is symmetrical about the y-axis. So graphically, if I want to check symmetry about y-axis, this y-axis, this red line will be the mirror. And whatever image you draw on the left side, the same thing you will get on the right side. For example, let us talk about the function f of x comma y is equal to x square is equal to y. So let us take all the terms on one side. So we will get x square minus y. So now when we replace x with minus x, so we will get minus x whole square minus y. So that is x square minus y. So again, you can see that the function and f of x minus x comma y are both the same functions. And hence, this graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. Now, let us talk about symmetry about x-axis and y-axis. Now, when we talk about symmetry about x-axis and y-axis, that means both x and y, they contain even powers, right? So, in this case, you can replace x with minus x and y with minus y, and it will give you the same function. So, here, both the axes, x as well as y, will be representing two mirrors, and whatever image you will put above the x-axis, the same thing you will get below the x-axis, and whatever is put towards the left of the y-axis, the same thing will be put towards the right of the y-axis, right? For example, if I have the function x squared is equal to y squared, let us define the function f of x comma y as x squared minus y squared. So now when we replace x with minus x and y with minus y, so we will get minus x whole square minus minus y whole square. So that will be same as x squared minus y squared. So this graph is symmetrical about both x and y axis. Now, you can see this circle. The equation of the circle also represents that the graph is symmetrical about both the x axis as well as the y axis. 
Now let us talk about symmetry about the origin. Now when does a graph be symmetrical about the origin? When the curve is rotated through 180 degrees and we get the same low. Right? So here we can replace x with minus x and y with minus y. If we get the same function, then the graph is symmetrical about the origin. So here you can see that if I just rotate this graph through an angle of 180 degrees, we should get the same graph, right? So here is an example. This blue curve when rotated to 180 degrees will be looking like the red curve. And hence, this graph is symmetrical about the origin, right? So now one question might be coming into your mind that when we were checking symmetry about x-axis and y-axis and symmetry about the origin, both mathematical expressions are the same. So here we can say that whenever a graph is symmetrical about x-axis and y-axis, it will be always symmetrical about the origin. But the converse is not true. If a graph is symmetrical about the origin, it is not necessary that it will be symmetrical about the x-axis and the y-axis. Right? Okay. So now let's talk about symmetry about y equal to x line. So in this case, we can replace x with y and y with x. We should get the same function. So here you can see that this red line is acting as y is equal to x line. And this blue curve below the curve is same as above the curve. Right? So this graph is symmetrical about y equal to x line. Now next is symmetry about y equal to minus x line. So in this case, you can replace x with minus y and y with minus x. The function should remain unchanged. And here you can see that this red line is marking y is equal to minus x line. And this triangular portion, this triangular portion is symmetrical about y equal to minus x line. So whatever is above the line, the same thing is below the line also. right? And you can also observe here that the graph is symmetrical about the x-axis, the graph is also symmetrical about the y-axis, and the graph is also symmetrical about y equal to x line. Right? Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to discuss here is origin. Now, it might happen that the curve passes through the origin. So, if your curve does not contain any independent constant term, that means the equation will always pass through the origin. Right? In simpler words, in a layman language, we can say that you can substitute x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 in the curve. If the curve gets satisfied, then the equation passes through the origin. Right? So, for example, if I have the curve of the parabola y square equal to 4ax, we can see that there is no independent constant term present. And hence, this curve is always passed through the origin. Right? Likewise, the second curve, y squared is equal to 4ax plus 8. Here we can see that the independent term is 8. And hence, x equal to 0, y equal to 0 doesn't satisfy this equation. So this curve will not pass through the origin. Right? So next, if the curve passes through the origin, then how can we calculate the tangent to the curve at the origin? So the tangent can be calculated by equating the lowest degree term equal to zero, right? So whenever a curve passes through the origin, we can always calculate the tangent at the origin by equating the lowest degree term equal to zero, right? Apart from calculating tangent at the origin, we can also calculate tangent at any other point h comma k. So tangent can be calculated by you can shift the origin, so we can simply replace x is equal to x plus h and y is equal to y plus k. So wherever our origin is, it will get shifted to the new coordinate system, capital X and capital Y, and then we can put the lowest degree term equal to z, right? So that will give us the tangent at any other point h comma k, right? So we have understood the first point that is symmetry and the second point that is origin, whether a curve passes through the origin, right? So I hope you have understood these two points. So thank you so much for listening. Believe in yourself and you will definitely do it. 
and do watch my next videos on curve tracing and do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Thank you and have a nice day.